Hello and welcome to my first instalment of Would That Shit Really Happen? My name's Luke and this video is brought to you by my own thirst for knowledge and answers to how the world works. What do Mamma Mia, James Bond and Dante's Peak have in common? Well, the answer is Pierce Brosnan. And who doesn't love that hairy chest of his? Well, in this episode, we will explore the explosion of a volcano and how good old Pierce tries to outrun that explosion and how a bunch of stuff he does whilst trying to outrun this explosion would not happen in real life. Unfortunately, we don't get to see that chest of his, but that's not what we're here to discuss. In the 1997 film, volcanologist Harry Dalton is called to the namesake town of the film, and that's Dante's Peak. Basically, the whole film centres around Harry trying to help the people of Dante's Peak evacuate the town without dying. And whilst watching, I noticed that there were a number of different points in the film where I went, what the f***? My top three would that shit really happen moments were, number one, out driving an insanely fast traveling cloud of gas, ash, and rock. Sounds doable, right? Wrong. Although in the film, good old Pierce, I'm gonna keep calling him Pierce, and his comrades seem to achieve this impossible feat. Why is this impossible, do you ask? Well, if a flow of volcanic ash, gas, and rock, called a pyroclastic flow, can travel up to 700 kilometers per hour, there is no way a car traveling at 60 to 80 kilometers per hour would be able to outdrive that. Very wishful thinking. It did make for a good edge of your seat moment though. Just pretty unrealistic. Pyroclastic flows are often regarded as the most dangerous volcanic phenomena due to the speed at which they travel and the volcanic particles or tephra they contain. They occur when there is a huge buildup of pressure on the inside of a volcano and this causes a massive blowout. Think of this situation as trying to outdrive a commercial aeroplane. Big no. Number two, driving through an actual flow of actual lava. Have you ever played The Floor is Lava? Well, I suppose this is a similar vibe, except the literal floor is literal lava. Now, Pierce decides that he can drive through a flow of lava, which can reach 1000 degrees Celsius because it is liquid rock. If anyone were to drive through a flow of lava in real life, the car wouldn't just sort of catch fire a bit like Pierce's car, it would fully blow up. The tyres and wheels would melt and the petrol tank would ignite almost instantly. Very inaccurate. Number three, the acidic lake. The last leg of the group's escape from the volcanic activity in Dante's Peak is crossing a seemingly steaming lake. A lake with increased acidity due to the nasty corrosive chemicals that have been introduced into it by the lava flow. Gases like SO2 or sulphur dioxide, SO3 or sulphur trioxide, and HCl, hydrogen chloride, are usually the most common in acid lakes. These chemicals then dissolve into the water of the lake, making it more acidic. So the group finds a boat to cross in, and as soon as they start riding in it, the boat begins to dissolve. Now it's true that when heat is introduced into a reaction, it speeds the reaction up, i.e. the dissolving of a boat in an acidic lake. However, the rate at which this boat dissolves is way too fast in the film. It almost happens in a matter of seconds, and a reaction of that scale, i.e. something larger than a test tube at a desk in a lab, takes time. Honestly, the lake should not have been all that acidic anyway, because the type of eruption in the movie, a Plinian eruption, contains certain rocks like andesite and rhyolite that cause lava to be highly viscous. This means that the flow would probably not have been able to make the distance to the lake and cause it to be really acidic anyway. Whilst there are some things in this film that most definitely would not have happened in reality, there is no denying that Dante's Peak is probably one of the greatest geological disaster movies out there. And that's it, I'm done. In the next episode of Would That Shit Really Happen, I will be talking about a shark movie that is much better than Jaws, and that's Deep Blue Sea. My name's Luke, and this is the first instalment of Would That Shit Really Happen, brought to you by my own thirst for knowledge and answers to how the world works. This is a university project based on science communication in the web and on the internet, so if you don't mind, please hit the like and subscribe button and share with anyone who you think might be interested in this movie.